I was in MHMR constantly. I was always told that any feeling I had was irrational. And I was irrational because I was bipolar. And I was bipolar because I was ADHD, and it was all my, my choice. choice. Next thing you know, they found a safe in there. Safe contained, I don't know how many ounces of methamphetamine and some pistols. I began to notice that I was different from others. In the second grade was probably the first time. My parents came to school for a, a teacher conference. It was at the end of the year, because I was immature and I, I had too much fun. I didn't focus and I laughed and made jokes all day. And um, I got up and I would leave and walk home. In the third grade, I just felt that I wasn't good enough for even my parents. I never had anything bad happen to me in my family life. It was like me doing the hurting all the time. I, like, I guess I always felt it was like, like I was just born with a defect. When I was in, about fi in fifth grade, I started noticing that I just wasn't sleeping at all, that I would just toss and turn. Like I could still see my alarm clock at like 4 a.m and thinking, man, it's fixing, my alarm's fixing to go off. And I'd be so tired at school. The first time I ever smoked pot was to be cool. And then I slept though that night and that was it. I was like, I can sleep and now I can be around people and not be hyper and get on their nerves and I can be accepted. I, I just always wanted to hear a parent say to my mom the things like that. I always heard, you know, parents saying about other little girls. Like, she's so, so sweet, I didn't even know she was there. <laughs> no, uh-uh. I just wanted to be, like, able to control my, control my, have self-control, Miss Tammy. That's really what I always wanted. Well, I smoked weed so frequently, and um, I was taking ADHD medicine, and then all, just all the psych meds that they, you know, they give a, a child like me that, or that was presumed to have, you know, ADHD, um, then the smoking weed on top of it, and then um, I became just depressed. I mean, it just literally puts you in like an amnesia bubble is the way, when I look back on it, I describe addiction because you think that you're normal and, and you don't know really what's going on in the world around you. like. But you're living in the house with your family, and you think, you know, I'm, I'm a contributing member here, you know, like everything's all good, and everybody's just going, like, looking, looking at you. But inside, I, I know, like, you, you don't, you don't know what's happening, and then all of a sudden, when you like wake up, you're in jail, or something really bad happens, and then that, then all those flooding things come to you, all the guilt and the shame, it just weighs you down, weighs you down, to where you just let go of any. I, I just let go of any kind of hope in myself. I 
I didn't want to live. It was either Jesus was going to show up and show out in my life or I was going to kill myself. I was definitely put here for a reason. Say I feel happy and I feel at peace now. I'm glad I made the decision to call out for Jesus because he showed up. I just lost a baby. I was on drugs, methamphetamine, Lord tabs, alcohol. And the restoration he's done in my family is amazing. The Lord, definitely. I can do nothing without him. I don't have words for the, the emotional and spiritual pain. I had about a three or $400 a day habit on opiate pain medicine, stimulants, or heroin. Blessed beyond belief, peaceful, full of joy. It's beautiful. Mission Messiah is an 18-month program created by the leading of Jesus to be a refuge for women and women with children that were living without hope. Many of our women were involved in drug addiction, alcoholism, victims of sexual abuse, domestic violence, and in deep despair. Our leadership and life skills program revolves around the teaching of Jesus Christ and His principles of living. The 18-month program consists of 12 months on campus residential development through classes, I want to quote a verse out of Hebrews, scripture memory, and practical life skills and prayer. Our work training program, WOW Warehouse, and Zip Business Services were created to equip women for successful lives. Sitting right there at the bar was this woman named Lisa, and she just was just dripping in jewels and was from Paris. And she said, you must come be my face of the Chanel girl from 19 to 21. But in that world, when you're around, in Dallas especially, where everybody is so rich and has so much money, and everybody has a different accent from a different country, so the drugs and the guns and, and just everything is just, it looks so beautiful. It's not like the drug houses that I progressed into later on where, you know, everybody ends up How did you meet Kara? At a mutual friend's house. We just happened to be there same time, same day. And um, I took notice of her, I guess. She took notice of me. And my birthday was the following day. And uh, I asked my friend to ask her if they all wanted to go out to dinner. He was taking me out to dinner. And from there, it's pretty much history. I was their drug dealer. He just loved me no matter what. I was like, I sell drugs. He was like, not after today. You guys walk me through the next couple of years. What did that look like you know, <sighs> as a family? <laughs> Dysfunctional and... The leash got longer, you know, more freedom, more able to do things where less restrictions. And then I got in a car accident and they, gave me pain pills and I never cared about pain pills. I didn't even think that was a drug, but it's a horrible addiction. And that is what relapsed me. And like so much pressure to never ask anybody for help until it just all comes crashing down because you don't want to um, expose all your ugly to everyone. I remember just being so scared. I was in MHMR constantly I was always told that any feeling I had was irrational, and I was irrational because I was bipolar, and I was bipolar because I was ADHD, and it was all my choice. There were some problems, and I thought I could straighten them out. And I got into a car with a couple of guys to go see if we could find some resolution to this problem, and we got pulled over. The guys had a lot of drugs and some guns in the car. So of course, the police look at them, see me in the car with them, they look tattooed up and all that stuff. And here I am, just, you know, look like some, look tattoo. like I've been abducted or something. And they take me out of the car first. They said, where y'all going? You know, and I didn't know what to tell them. 
just kind of dumbfounded myself, and I was like, well, I was going with him, we're going to do something, blah, blah, I don't even remember what I said, to be honest with you, at this point in time, but uh, they said, all right, sit down on the curb. So I sat on the curb, they pulled them out, and immediately those, I ain't telling you nothing, they started acting crazy. And next thing you know, we're all phased down on the concrete, handcuffed. Well, they found a safe in there, safe containing, I don't know how many ounces of methamphetamine, and some pistols. Two hundred sixty-one grams. And that was it. And then he was just gone. Spring is blooming at WOW! New gifts, jewelry, pottery, and home decor pieces are arriving daily. Spring is in the air and color makes everything better. Fresh, beautiful, and fun. You will find it always at WOW! Wow Warehouse, 815 North Grandview in Odessa. See you soon. Sixty more tab a day and forty soma a day on the first rehab that I went to. I remember saying I want to want to care about something. God, I can't do this anymore. Just help me. I can't, I can't do this anymore. I really have changed. And it, it, it's God. It's God. It's God. I know he's real. I know he's so real. I didn't think he was real before. I didn't think he was real before. He, he is so real. And so loyal and faithful. And I don't know what took me so long, really. Pat, uh -huh. this woman that, that she describes, tell me who you saw in her. Uh, great big mess at first, but um, you could tell she had a, a wonderful heart. There was definitely God in there. That, that she was raised correctly and that she came from good people and once she got past that shell that she had on the outside um, there was a beautiful young lady in there. and uh, he just kept loving me no matter what I said or what I broke <laughs> I mean, I remember I would be so, I would be bouncing off the wall, screaming, y'all throwing a fit, and he would just be like this. You know, just wait for me to be done. I think I, I was that kid when I was little. We clicked. It was not many words for it. It, it was easy. It was just, Best friends for life, huh? Yeah. And then we prayed. We went to McDonald's or something. First time we like ate, right? And he prayed, and I was like, it was like, it was just easy. Do you know what I mean? It was just like, it's just always been so easy. A lot of people that I knew that were at addicts, I mean, they want to be clean. They do. They're heart of hearts. They hate it because they don't have anyone. They've been hurting their families. They don't have their kids. They're hungry all the time. You know, it's a hard life. And so, and I, I wanted help. I did, but I was like, I'm not going anywhere until my husband's got the kids. I don't know. And I just remember what led me to the mission, I just totally just 
let go. And I was like, I knew Jesus was there, but I was mad at him. I turned to God and he does, he did what he does best. He comforted me, kept me strong, kept me focused. Um, it's, it was really tough. For me, family has always been everything. I'm, I'm sitting in a ditch alone with no drugs. I, that was probably the least amount of drugs I've ever done in my life was that year. I didn't care. I just wanted to be away from anybody that I could hurt and just sit there into the dirt until I either starved to death or when my husband finally came out and got me. I had on a white button up, uh, te like a long sleeve shirt, uh, like a guy would like, you know, what do you call it, honey? Yeah, a button down. A button down shirt and boots. They were eight sizes too big. I met Jesus in those boots, though. Miss Tammy hated those boots. She'd be like, pick up your feet. Child, don't you have some boots that fit? My vocabulary was so low. Someone had an iPod, and, but it, it, could, it was like an MP3 that it could record, too, right? And it accidentally happened, and I remember listening to it, and um, that's all I said was, uh-huh, yeah, what? Right, and they would laugh or something. Kira, do you remember when you got there, all of the diagnosis and all of the things that had been spoken over you? Oh, yes. Because that's something you and I would talk about a lot, and I would tell you, mm -hmm. Kara, no, mm -hmm. you're not. Right. Do you remember what those were? Yes, um, paranoid, schizophrenic, bipolar, um, with, uh, I mean, it, it was extreme psychosis. Uh, in anger, um, I was dangerous, um, violent fits of rage. This girl stole ten dollars out of my AA book, and it took. And uh, so I went, at, and, then, well, and I didn't. But then she stole from my friend, and then I was like, "Oh, you're not gonna steal from my friend, right? I know it was you." And I remember their eight orderlies that are huge had me, but their sneakers were going on that floor in the cafeteria because I was like, "I'm going I'm gonna get to her." That's how strong and powerful the anger, the demons, you know, that it was inside of me. And they called it all these other things, and I just accepted it. I just said, okay, give me some more. You know, I feel like I just, ever since I was a little girl, just accepted those grave clothes, just accepted um, all the diagnosis. Um, ADD, you're depressed, you're ADHD, um, hyperactive, oh, manic depressive, and now you're manic. Just kind of talk to me about your program and what began and how it began to change and what God began to Well, I started crying because there was nothing but Christian music all the time. source for business in color printing, signage, graphic art design, wide format printing, and custom embroidery. Zip is an authorized FedEx shipping location. 943 North Grandview in Odessa. Zip on over. Zip, 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 zip. I feel like learning scriptures every day gives you something to be proud of. And it's like you just feel so empowered. It teaches you how to live. Yeah. It's like the best thing ever. Hide his words in your heart so you don't sin against him. I mean, it's just like that's your armor that you can keep. Pat, do you remember the first time that you came to see her at the mission? Yes, ma'am. I do remember when I first saw Kara at the mission. Um, I was scared. I was still trying to put my feet underneath me too as well. So when I got there, um, 
we were very happy. I could tell that God was working in our lives already. Since day one we met, or day two actually, we were together. We hadn't been apart since. I had to do what I needed to do and let her continue to 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 live and grow and and get better. He loves you and he's there all the time. And it doesn't matter if you act good or if you act bad. And it's not a game that you play to earn love. It's given. It's grace. You don't, you just receive it. My mom and I go to church and go to Bible study together and it's so fun. It's the most fun I've ever had with my mom because we're both like-minded now because we both love the Lord. My husband and I get along because we're both like-minded because we both understand the love of the Lord. This is freedom. I mean, I have no mental illness. My parents were like, she, would y'all, when they called the mission, they said, no, there's no psych meds here. They near about hung up. And they're like, no, y'all can't handle her without them. And y'all said, no, we can. And I was like, yes. And I got to know myself for the very first time. Like the Lord wants the pressure that my parents always felt. He wants to take care of me forever. You know, he loves me and he's got me. And I feel like I can just rest in him. You know, I just think about all those pills and meds I used to have to, that I used to take and all the things that I presume was right was wrong with me. And I have, I have control over that today. Like, I can think. The can... bad little girl that went away to the mission came home with God-fearing woman. I love you so much. That we're all very proud of. So how did a pretty girl like you get caught up in a lifestyle that got you to mission this Trying to fit in with friends um, or being rejected by certain people that that just wanted me to go towards the crowd that was involved with drugs. God's preparing me right now at Mission Messiah to become a better mom and um, to know my worth and to know who I am in Him. He is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. Mission Messiah is an 18-month program created by the leading of Jesus to be a refuge for women and women with children that were living without hope. Many of our women were involved in drug addiction, alcoholism, victims of sexual abuse, domestic violence, and in deep despair. I'm a work in progress, and, and um, I know that I have to keep surrendering in order for Him to do that for me because... That song right there just told me it was from God. It is well, and it's going to be well. Our Leadership and Life Skills program revolves around the teaching of Jesus Christ and His principles of living. The 18-month program consists of 12 months on campus residential development through classes. I want to quote a verse out of Hebrews. It says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Scripture memory. Commit your works unto the Lord, and your thoughts will be established. And practical life skills and prayer. Followed by six months of mentorship, applying their developed skills. Our work training program, WOW Warehouse, and Zip Business Services were created to equip women for successful lives with a hope so and a future.
special to be sitting here right now with my son, Cody, and my daughter, Kaylee. It's a miracle because I didn't think I would ever get them back. It was probably very important for me to stay in Odessa, and I went back home against the counsel of my spiritual leaders. They had a check in their spirit about me moving home, but I moved home anyway. My little brother committed suicide in 2011. It was a dead giveaway that I had relapsed. I attempted to take my own life several times during the relapse. People that knew me knew something was wrong. I Miss Tammy knew. It was very heavy on my spirit to, to come back to the mission, but I was very ashamed. I was living on the streets. I was in an extremely abusive relationship. He would beat me on a daily basis and almost took my life. I got put in the hospital. I had a broken tailbone, other fractured that took a long time for me to recover. We hope that you have been blessed to see the reality of Jesus' power to transform a life. We would also ask that if you know a woman or a mother and a child in need of help, that you might go to missionmessiah.org and find the information and make it available to that person. We would also like to express to you that we're always in need of prayer warriors and financial support to make these wonderful things happen. May the Lord bless you.